And this is the word of the Lord. Thank you, be God. Uh, next, we'll have a selection from Brother Cliff and the men of God. Amen? Amen.
1851 on Concord Street, and the school was placed under the care of the First Presbyterian Church in 1862. In the year 1866, a second and larger building was constructed. Then in 1896, a third, a third and final building at 209 Concord Street was erected and named City Park Chapel. Uh -huh. During these years, four organizations shared freely the use of the building. First, the Filipino Church, then the only one in the city. Second, the kindergarten maintained by a special committee. And third, the nutrition class lunchroom, which provided meals for undernourished school children. Fourth, the maternal health clinic, which offered aid in the problems of motherhood. Through the years until 1942, the First Presbyterian Church of Brooklyn was responsible for ministry in that building. When the Fort Greene project was undertaken, those who were responsible for the Protestant church realized that to minister effectively in such a large project, it would be necessary to have a cooperative program. Therefore, in 1942, Dr. Kenneth D. Miller of the New York City Mission Society and Dr. Philip P. Elliott of the First Presbyterian Church called together leaders of several churches and formed a committee to provide for a religious program here. This, committee effective, this committee's effective work resulted in forming of the Church of the Open Door, which represents seven denominations, seven denominations, namely Presbyterian, Methodist, Baptist, Congregational Reform under United, United Presbyterian and Evangelical. Chosen to be the leader in this Christian endeavor was the Reverend Everett E. Sheldon, to whom we owe an undying debt of gratitude. A lot was accomplished in those pioneer days. In spite of the hardship offered by a changing and complex community, the established church, under its new name, the Church of the Open Door began to function with its first constitution and governing body. The early struggle was hard but fruitful considering the real service being rendered. Because of the building of the Brooklyn Queens Expressway, the City Park Chapel building had to be torn down. This challenge was the high point in the history of our church. The united efforts of the Presbyterian, Methodist, Baptist, Congregational, Reformed United Presbyterian, Evangelical Denomination, the New York City Mission Society, and the Protestant Council made under our new church building possible. These churches and agencies witness to their faith in our future by underwriting the new building, which we now enjoy. In 1949, we were happy to welcome Reverend Richard H. Ceciliano as our spiritual leader. The, this man, with his inspiration and sincerity, touched off the spark which ignited an all-out effort on the part of a now rapidly growing congregation. Reverend Ceciliano carried on what Reverend Sheldon had so nobly pioneered our goal was to set worship in the new church known as the Church of the Open Door. This name was given the church in establishing its primary functions and aim. A church whose doors would be open to serve humanity with no question as to race, color, or religious origin. And in 1953, ground was broken by the Honorable Red Robert W. Moses. Philip Cruz, Anthony Jones, Sr., and Dr. Kenneth D. Miller, Reverend Richard H. Siciliano, and the Honorable Harold Stitcher. In 1954, our dreams came true. And on October 31st, 1954, at 4 o'clock, 
we enjoyed the dedication of our new church. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you. The Reverend Richard A. Cicilliano became our new spiritual leader. Moving on to other fields, Reverend Cicilliano left with the prayers of the church. The following ministers have contributed greatly to the spiritual growth of our church. The Reverends W. Sterling Carey, Willis C. Tabor, Dr. Cole Wellerman, Ray Frazier, Jose Sanchez, Alberto Filomeno, Calvin O. Presley, Juan A. Vasquez, Charles Fisher, and the Reverend Walter S. Keeler. For more, than, for more than 15 years, the New York City Mission Society subsidized our budget until we were able to assume our responsibilities. In 1971, the church became incorporated. Recently, the churches and the agencies have seen fit to issue a, and grant us a mortgage for which we will be eternally grateful. Many of our charter members are still with us, and two of our church families have had sons who become pastors. Father Herbert Thompson, Jr. of Grace Episcopal Church, and the Reverend Joseph D. Jenkins, Jr., Assistant Minister of Brook Memorial Baptist Church, both of Queens, New York. During the 1960s, we had a small Spanish congregation under the pastor of Reverend Juan Velasquez and Reverend Andre Diaz. The 1960s also saw the integration of the midweek service as was suggested by Reverend Velasquez. This service, these services were well attended by both congregations. This service is continued every Wednesday with Bible study and prayer. In 1964, under the pastor of Reverend Parsley and Reverend Diaz, we were able to have our own private peace corps to the Dominican Republic. Eight young people from the Church of the Open Door, four girls and four boys, flew to the Dominican Republic to help Native youth build a much needed chapel and basketball court. The youth range aged from 16 to 22. James Taylor Jr. was the youngest and Peggy, and Peggy counseled the oldest. Others included Brenda Harris, Rosalind Arnold, Sandra Johnson, Harold Mills, Howard Mills, Jean, and Thomas Edwards. The youth raised the sum of $3,200 to finance their trip. Chaperones were Reverend Diaz, Mother Betty Cunningham, and Deacon Willie May Holmes. Our youth continued to be ambassadors for Christ. In 1965, the Youth Fellowship of Bethany Church of Rutland, Vermont, visited the Church of the Open Door while on the United Nations bus tour. Some months later, our youth were invited to spend a weekend in Vermont. They stayed in various homes and visited places of interest. Attend, after attending regular church school classes, the youth participated in worship service before returning to Brooklyn. They were chaperoned by Sister Mary Harris and Deacon Iris Paulus, Herbert Paulus, forgive me. During 1965 was the formation of the Karen Holmes Memorial Scholarship to give financial aid to high school seniors. The Open Book Club started this scholarship, which now has become a church-wide effort. After the death of Deacon Henry McMillan in 1990, a second scholarship fund was established in his honor to aid the growing number of open door seniors to go on to higher education. All forms of scouting, Boy Scout, Girl Scouts, Brownies, Cub Scouts, Explorers, continue to be an important part of our church program. Amen. Amen.
church say amen. Hallelujah. Church say amen again. This time we're going to take up our announcements. Amen. We're going to bring our names so we can call them for those here. And this week is Women's Week. And so we celebrate. Yes, let's give God amen. Celebrating uh, our church anniversary, and because of the pandemic, we have changed our um, we have changed our uh, uh, calendar in the year. And so, uh, we want to let you know the things that are going on this week. Amen. Yes. Um, and today, uh, I believe today. Well, first of all, we want to thank God for yesterday. The women gave out, what did they give out, 150? Oh, oh care, products, uh, care products. Care products. Care products. Over 100. They gave out over 100. They gave care products to women. Let's give God a And these bags were full of, there were so many things in the bag, I asked for a bag. Amen. I'm not a woman. Amen. I found out in life you don't ask for it, you won't get it. Amen. But uh, you know, sometimes even as a man, you look at your face and things are getting rough. Amen. So you got to spruce it up. Amen. There were so many things in the bag. It was all kind of goodies. And not, not food goodies, like personal care products for yes. your skin, for your face. And I want to congratulate Sister Courtney Lyons and the Women's Day Committee, Sister Nicole Miller. Women, uh, I saw who was here. I saw uh, uh, who was Dr. here. Uh, I saw Dr. Beth. I saw Pam Mayhem. I saw Lorraine Brand. Candace Baptiste was here. Uh, and uh, so we thank God for those women. Thank God for that very successful day uh, yesterday. Um, now, today they're getting ready for the Clay and Pray Art Workshop. That's going to be, uh, the workshop will be Friday at 7. Yes. Uh, and it's going to be on Zoom. And the Zoom, there's a Zoom meeting idea and a passcode that I'm going to uh, uh, tell you to call the church. I'm not going to give you the Zoom meeting idea and passcode now, but Friday at 7, women are going to use clay and paint to create fruits that will symbolize the fruit of the Spirit. So we want everybody to join us. This is a great endeavor. I encourage everybody to do this. Every human being needs to have an art. Yes. You, should have, you should sing. You should play an instrument. You should write poetry or write stories. Or That's you right. should act. You should do something. You should do something artistic. Amen. You should. Somebody said, can I cook? Yeah, that's dangerous to some of us. Because you know we just eating too much during the pandemic. Amen. So we need some other kind of art besides cooking and eating. I heard somebody say, I eat because my art. No, that's not. <laughs> you, you just hungry. You ain't no, you ain't no uh, chef or nothing. Amen. So listen, all women, all girls, get your girls to do something creative. Uh, it's a shame. So many of our people, all we let our girls do is learn how to shake their behinds. Amen. We need to develop every part of the human persona. We need to develop the artistic part. And that's why I'm so grateful to God. We have a church where many arts are presented, many opportunities to uh, have an art. Amen. And so uh, we want, um, want you to come on Friday, October 23rd at 7 p.m. But now, in order to participate, you've got to come today from 3 to 5. They'll be giving out the supplies. That's Sunday. Today from 3 to 5, come down to the church. We're going to have a physically distant giveaway of the supplies. If you can't get the supplies, um, um, then get some white Crayola air dry clay, some acrylic paint, primary colors, and some paint brushes. Yes. And you can call the church tomorrow, and uh, Sister Goodman will fill you in on all this. White Crayola air dry clay, acrylic paint, primary colors, and get some paint brushes. Try some new things. Part of the open door is that you should do something new and stop doing the same things you've been doing for so many years. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. So uh, then uh, on Sunday,
for such a time as this. Pastor Melanie Rocks for New Life Cathedral is going to be our guest speaker. She'll be right here. Let's give God a Colors are purple and gold. Uh, I believe, where's Deacon Lyons? Uh, where's Deacon Flowers? Deacon Flowers, you all asking the men to do what? Wear purple? If they can, or at least wear a gold tie if they can. Okay, well, at least wear a gold tie. I thought y'all had the uniform or something. Amen. But men, uh, wear a gold tie. Amen. The women's colors are purple and gold. And so we want all the women to have their colors and pay the pledge. The pledge is $100. The pledge is $100. Uh, colors are purple and gold, uh, and the service will start at 11.30. The Women's Day Committee is asking that you take a picture in your Women's Day color and upload it to your Facebook page by using the hashtag uh, pound sign or hashtag TCOTLD Women's Day 2020. Uh, hashtag or pound sign, for some of you don't know that hashtag term, TCOTLD Women's Day 2020. What that will enable you to do is when you look at one picture, you'll be able to see all the pictures of women of the church. And if you don't know how to do this, I was on the phone last night with my mother. We were trying to, I was trying to show her something on the iPad. It was, uh, it was, uh, it was very uh, trying, amen. Uh, and so finally we, we couldn't get it like we wanted it to. But get somebody to show you if you don't know how to do this, because it will be a very beautiful thing. All right, uh, so that's Women's Day. We thank God for Sister Courtney Lyons uh, going forth in the Women's Day. We want to thank God for all of you that, that came uh, yesterday and uh, we brought a love offering. I'm having a birthday celebration on Tuesday. Tuesday is my birthday. Yeah. And I wasn't going to do anything. And, uh, one of my godchildren asked me, what are you doing? I said, I'm sleeping late. Amen. That was going to be my birthday. They said, oh, no, we can't do that. And so they talked me into having a program. Now, this program is going to be a Zoom program. And we've asked a number of people to send in a short clip. And we're going to play the clips on the Zoom platform. Zoom is really, if you don't know, it's really a wonderful platform that everyone is using now. And so uh, call the church and get the passcode. Uh, call the church and get the ID, uh, the, uh, what is it, the member ID. You need a meeting ID and you need a passcode. So call Amen. the church to get that and then join us. There'll be singing, there'll be dancing, there'll be poetry, there'll be tributes from uh, near and far. And I'm told there's going to be a surprise. Amen. And I'm, I'm, I keep asking, what's the surprise? Huh? I don't like surprises. I like to know what's going on. Amen. Most of the surprises in my life have not always been good. Amen. But they keep telling me stop asking and just leave the surprise alone. So that's Tuesday at 7. And then Wednesday at 7, Reverend Jonelle Thompson is going to come on. And I'm not sure. Is she coming here? Is that going to be on Zoom? On Zoom. On Zoom? Uh, no. This, this one She's coming, yes. Yes, She's coming here. That's better because you get more people here on Facebook. So this Wednesday, I will not be teaching Bible study, but Reverend Jonelle Thompson, one of our wonderful ministers, uh, as is Reverend McDonald. Reverend McDonald is a minister too. And Reverend McDonald is doing art on Friday. Reverend Thompson is doing the Word on Wednesday. So join us Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Amen. Join us Wednesday. We're going to have a special uh, Bible study uh, on uh, for such a time as this. Reverend Thompson will take that theme and work with it uh, as she uh, will uh, be led by the Holy Spirit. So this is going to be a great week, Tuesday. Uh, join me in my birthday celebration at 7 o'clock on Zoom. Call the church, get the information. Uh, that's Tuesday, Wednesday. Join us at 7 o'clock for the Bible study. Friday, join us for the clay and pray celebration at 7 o'clock. Rest on Saturday and come Sunday. Pastor Melanie Rochford from New Life Cathedral will be here. She's a wonderful woman of God. She's been here before. She did a wonderful job. Uh, women wear your purple and gold. Men wear your gold ties. Amen. I'm going to go get some purple and gold clothes from somewhere. Amen. Uh, people are shaking their head. Amen. You know I'm going to do it. Amen. I'm coming in purple and gold. Amen. Y'all don't know how Pentecostal preachers dress. I'm coming in. I might come in with some gold slippers. You never know. Amen. Amen. But we really, 
<laughs> we really, we really look for the women to come in and just have a good time. I'm just sharing with the women. I've been blessed. We have so many wonderful women in our church. They're doing great things. They refuse to be shut down. Uh, they refuse to stop because of the pandemic. And uh, they've been giving out things. Uh, and we want to thank our councilwoman, Lori Cumbo, helped them to give out those 100 gift bags. Uh, and it's just a great, wonderful thing that they've been doing. Uh, we're praying for all of those who are bereaved. Uh, I'm praying for many of uh, I'm praying for many of uh, uh, there was a young lady that passed away in a tragic accident. And what was her name? Kimani Foster. Kimani Foster passed away. She was known to some members of our church and the many members of the community. I'm praying for all of you in the loss of Kimani. Praying for uh, the Britt family and the loss of our sister, member Regina Britt. Still praying for the Boyd family. I'm praying for everybody that's going through. And I want you to listen. Yes, Tracy. Yes, I pray for the Dickinson family. Sister Dickinson lost her mother. I believe she has gone south to bury her mother. Pray for the whole Dickinson family and everybody who has lost someone. So much loss going on right now. Now I just want to share with you some of the people who have uh, who have signed in. And then uh, let's see what we have next. After I do that, we're going to come back. You can all just going to read the end of the church history. But first, we've got a lot of people here today. I'm so glad. Uh, listen, I'll preach if there's only one person, but I'm glad it's not just one person. Amen. Amen. I'm glad you here. You, you, and even you, as we used to say in Chicago. Now, share this Facebook. Uh, we are trying to minister as far as we can get the word out. The Bible says the word of God is not bound. We get bound up. We have to wear masks. We have to be on lockdown, but the word of God is not bound. Send this to 20 people. You never know who you are helping. You never know. You've seen that story on Facebook about the preacher that was supposed to go out and he didn't go out and his son went out and passed out flyers to tell people God loves them. And uh, uh, he went to, he had one flyer left and he was going to go home, but he saw a house and a little boy knocked on the door and uh, nobody came and he just felt he should knock on the door and he kept knocking and the woman came she said yes and he said miss I'm passing out flyers he said this is for you and the flyer said God loves you and she stopped and she started crying the next Sunday the woman came in the church and she said you know I was so lonely and I was so desperate I made up my mind I was going to kill myself mm. while I was getting ready to kill myself somebody knocked on the door and then I said, well, this is the last thing I'll do. I'll go to the door. When she, she said, when I went to the door, this sweet little boy, and he was in the church, she pointed to him, she said, this little boy gave me a flyer, let me know that God loved me. And she said, God spoke to me through this little boy, knocked on the door, changed my mind, and I'm here today to give my heart to the Lord. never know. I would say give the seven and give the eight, for you know not what your giving will bring forth. Amen. The Bible says share. Sow your seed. Throw it out. Amen. You don't know where it's going to land. You don't know what it's going to do. So share this program with 20 people. I just want to give thanks to God for the following people that, that are with us. Rihanna Palacio. Rihanna is about to deliver and have a child. Everybody raise your hand. Yeah. And say, dear Lord, dear Lord, give us safe delivery. Give us safe delivery. In Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 All right. We are in Marvel. Uh, Jason Jackson. Jason Jackson is watching Facebook and he's here too. He's like Sally Law Fair. He's everywhere. <laughs> Rosa Wilkinson, Elaine Rabelais, Carrie Holmes, Stephen Perez, Kim Jones, Teresa McCurpin, Deacon Lee, Sister Caraway, Sadie Cooper, Victor K, Rosa Ford, Courtney Lyons, our Women's Day Chairperson, Elizabeth Green, Tijuana Wiggins, Marcelette Wise, Sharon Kennedy, Melvin McMillan, Sharon Lane, Aaron Wiggins praying for the, the uh, family of Quentin Boyd also. Aaron Wiggins, Diane Caldwell, Priscilla Douglas, Eugenia Robinson, Trina Cook, Patricia Armand, Evelyn Richardson, Rosemary Cook, Janice Green, Pamela Ingram, Rashida Fitch, Reverend Thompson, Rosemary Perkins, Annette Peterson, Cynthia Bright, Marjorie Mitchell, Doreen Flowers, Doreen Lyons, Sheila Beard, Tish Kreit, Roberta Christian, Gerald Carter, Ruti Sanayan, Ruti Sanayan, 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 I'm sorry, Ruby. Uh, Annette Lyons, 
Uh, Brother Oliver Christian, let's give God a hand. Stealth tried to kill us. We received word that he was close to crossing over. We began to pray the prayer of faith. Amen. We even sent Deacon Lyons down there to minister to the family. And he is here today and he is well. Let's give Amen. God a hand. Amen. Uh, Ebony Richardson, Sister Kearney, Brian Johnson, Charlie Brown. Amen. Charlie Brown is with us, all right. Denise Evans, Deborah Ains, and Sheila. Murray, Reverend McDonald, Yvonne Prince, Brother Thompson, Vanessa Green, Sonia Smith, Deacon Robinson, Zaina Williams, Marie Ford, Teresa Rutherford, Renee Cook, Betty Wyman, Shirley Cazenade, Ernestine Foster, Sandra Francois, Gary Prince, Kimberly Clark, Karen Kelly, Joe Francis, LaJue Williams, my homegirl from Chicago, God bless you. LaJue, there's an open door in front of you, Deacon Brickhouse, Brother Douglas, <coughs> Candace Davis, Francis Robinson, William Wilson, Jasmine Douglas, Sahara Moore, Josephine Griffin, Antonio Alamo, Mona Morgan, Willie Witherspoon, Phyllis Pankey, Latisa Taylor, Andre Herbert, Bridget Huber, Carolyn Norris, Olivia Boykin, Irene Atkins, Irene Atkins, Brother Kearney, Marjette Taylor, Marjette, my homegirl, we grew up together in Little Baptist Church, South Side of Chicago, Open Door, in front of you, Marjette, Juanita O'Gara, Donna Berry, Lorraine Grant, Denise Stokes, Cherie Champlain, Janet Foster, Charles Black, R.N. Short, Jane Celestine, Kimberly Andrews, Reverend Kimberly Andrews, amen. My cousin in Chicago, her husband was sick, amen. We were praying that God would spare his life, God healed him and brought him out of the hospital, the Reverend Gerald Andrews. Let's give God a hand. Anuka Brown, Marshall McBeth, Marilyn Tucker, Dakota Barnes, Deacon McBeth, Deacon Callaway, up in Newburgh. Uh, Tasha Thomas, out in Pennsylvania. Jesse Thomas, we're praying for you all. Jesse and Tasha, open door out there. McKeevans, open door out there. Annette Bennett, Diane Jackson, Reverend Young, out in, uh, where's Reverend Young? Out in New Jersey. Long Ranch, New Jersey. Ophelia Austin, Deborah McBeth, and my man, my then new brother, Ed Patrick. God bless you. Let's give these persons a hand. Now, we only do our history uh, during this period in October because, as you heard, this is the month that our church was born. It is kind of long, but we're trying to compress 66 years. This is a different version of our history. We have five different versions because it's so long. Amen. So we want you to listen carefully as Deacon Jimmy Aldridge come and uh, read uh, this version of history. Okay, yes, get them up with them. Okay, take them. Good. Okay. Thank you, I'm Pastor Taylor. All power, all glory, and all honor belongs to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, church History Part 2. It reads as this Through the years, we have had a functioning board of Christian education. Those individuals who contributed to the spiritual and social program of the church as directors of Christian education were Grace Ritchie, Charlotte Williams, Shannon Phillips, Faraja, Millie Green, Virgie Fenton, and Carrie Johnson. Continuing in this tradition, our Board of Christian Education, spiritual and social programs are led by the Church of the Open Door, dedicated Christian members. Yes. Our church organizations have grown from the Women's League and the Men's Club to include the Young Women's Fellowship Circle, the Open Book Club, and the Progressive Fellowship. We now enjoy the services of the Sunday School Choir, Walter Johnson Choir, as well as the Senior Choir. Mm -hmm. The Senior Usher Board now includes the Junior Ushers. The Christian Education Department embraces the youth of our church. Annual scholarship awards were issued, highlighting services, a service as well as galactic achievement. During these and other occasions, we have received as guest speakers, speakers General Frederick Davison, Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm, City Council President 
Carol Bellamy, City Councilwoman Mary Pinkett, and news commentator Jane Tillman Irvin, to name a few. In 1971, the Church of the Open Door received as leader of the flock the Reverend Walter S. Keeler. He endeavored to make the church family aware of their obligation at the voting poll as well as church community, church and community. In this regard, we respond, we sponsored voters registration in the community. Our outreach program extended to prison ministry and nursing homes to bring souls to Christ. Under the pastorate of Reverend Walter S. Kiva, the Church of the Open Door became incorporated. We were blessed to have had this pastor who served us for 18 years before he resigned in December 1989. In January 1990, the Reverend Calvin O'Preston consented to become our interim pastor for six months. Under his leadership and that of the Church Personnel Committee, the church acquired a full-time minister. In July 1990, the Reverend Mark B.C. Taylor was elected to the pastorate of the Church of the Open Door and installed as the seventh pastor in his 36 years. Amen. 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 Reverend Taylor came to the Church of the Open Door with an interdenominational inter background, having worked, studied, and preached in eight different Christian denominations. Upon coming to this church, he brought new emphasis and re-emphasized older practices. First among these new emphases was the Pentecostal emphasis on the centrality of the Holy Bible. The necessity, the necessity of holy living and the importance of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Second among these was the Pentecostal emphasis on salvation and constant praise as the key to victorious living. Third among these new emphasis was the need to counteract racial self-hatred and the racism of society by teaching African American history. African American pride and by demonstrating African American power. A fourth emphasis was the importance of tithing to the church. Tithing has freed us, has freed us from fundraising and allowed more time for Christian service. Our concerns of the church of the open door were re-emphasized. For example, community service, social action, Christian and secular education, interdenominational activities, and youth program. Yeah. Our cries, our choirs have grown from four in numbers, or is it, no, two four in numbers, senior choir, Walter Johnson choir, Intermediate Choir and the Ida B. the Ida Stanford Choir. After the death of Sister Ida Stanford in 1993, who directed the Children's Choir for over 40 years, the choir was renamed the Ida Stanford Choir in her honor. Our Social Action Committee has shown to be a strong force in the community partially through their efforts and incinerator that was to be built in the Brooklyn Navy Yard was canceled when asbestos and other chemicals were found in the ground. The closing of steam heat and exotic dance club was due to strong oppositions from the church, community, and local politicians. Due to the nature of its business, the Social Action Committee, in conjunction with the Farragut Tenant Association, is instrumental in getting work done in tenants' apartments.
buildings and hallways. May 1991, the church was able to purchase a man's. In July 1993, we were able to burn the mortgage. Mm. Amen. We give a hand clap for that. In 1994, we purchased a church van with no pending car payments. Amen. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. That's Psalms 150 and 2. The Lord has truly blessed the church of the open door as our accomplishments have been many. In 1994, we hired a full-time secretary, purchased a new computer, installed new roof, roofing on the church, cushioned the pews and the sanctuary, published a quarterly newsletter written and edited by church members and newsletter committee, increased in church membership and tithe and offers, offering, prayer shuttings and services that was adult and youth, Increased in Bible study attendance, distributed religious tracts in the community, maintained an ongoing clothing drive to serve the homeless and our sisters and brothers living in shelters. The above is just to name a few of our blessings. Through its missions, the church supports, supports local, national, and foreign ministries. Church leaders and officers have been sent abroad to minister and study. In 1993, Deacon John and Trustee Elizabeth Thomas carried church aid to Florida. In 1994, Sister Iris Gray and Sister Ari Rogers traveled to an, traveled to an educational conference in Chicago. In 1995, Deacon Michelle Robinson and Trustee Louise Griffin traveled to Atlanta to study at the Institute of Church Management and Administration led by Reverend Calvin O'Presley. At present, the history of the Church of the Open Door is being written by the hand of old Almighty God. Our church is a fortress of faith, out of which the healing powers of God's Holy Spirit flows. That's Ezekiel 47, 1 through 12. We stand beneath the banner of the ruler of the universe, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the power over all powers. We stand humbly, prayerfully, meditatively, and joyfully as the Lord uses our church to challenge evil and shine the light of the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in our midst. As Pastor Taylor has stated, although such growth is necessary for great work of God, it is not sufficient. In other words, we must not, we must not stop where we are. We must march forward, for we are commanded by growing grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Not easy to read that history. So many names, so many little things, but I thank you. Thank you, Flowers, for taking us back to where God has brought us from. Let's give God a hand for bringing us. I'm going to bring them in with a praying song, and then we're going to have our meditation, and then we're finished for today. <laughs>
Jesus in me loves Jesus in you so easy. So easy. So easy. That's what y'all saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Amen. Amen. We well, all know the truth is it's not always easy to love people. Amen. But the song is helping us. Amen. We have to love the Jesus in the Because if you're honest, people can get on your nerves. Even people you love. Especially people you love. That's right. Get on your nerves. They, they know where to get you. They know where to get you. That's right. All right. But if you love Jesus, you got to love people. Amen. The Lord said, don't come to me talking about you love me. You ain't never seen me. You don't love the people you see all the time. So this is a great song. I said to myself, they can't be saying so easy. <laughs> but that's what they would say. <laughs> Amen. Because sometimes it's not easy to love people naturally. You gotta love the Jesus in people. All right, slow it down. Amen. My, my man is already ready to jam. Amen. Come move this microphone. All right. The Word of God should challenge us. When you think about things, you don't always see an open door. As a matter of fact, sometimes when you look at your past, you see that your actions might have closed many doors. Right, right. You might have had loss. You might have made great mistakes. You might have had a bad habit. The Lord might have brought you out of something. But never feel that your future is shut down. Never feel that the doors of opportunity are closed to you because the Lord Jesus Seeing the little strength is what I love about the Lord. God knows life brings even you, oh great Christian, to the point where you just seem to have a little strength. It's funny how sometimes you have great faith and other times you have little faith. But Jesus said it's not the size, it's whether or not you exercise that faith. Because if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, be removed. So he said to us today, behold, I've set before you an open door. I know your works. I've seen you have a little strength, but you kept my word. You followed my teachings. You didn't deny my name. Never be ashamed or afraid to call on the name of Jesus. I have to tell people this. They have gospel songs without Jesus. They are preachers that don't really preach about Jesus. They are people that don't pray in the name of Jesus. But Jesus is the foundation of the church. Jesus is the foundation of everything we have. And so be like the church in Philadelphia. Don't be ashamed to talk about Jesus. Jesus said, if you're ashamed to talk about me in front of these corrupt people down here, when you get to heaven with all of these saints and all these angels and the holy God, I'm just going to like, turn away. I'm going to be ashamed of you. But let's be like the church. Let's call his name. Let's follow his teaching. Let's keep working for him. Because <laughs> you're going to turn around and guess what? You're going to find he's put an open door in front of you. Let's bow our head and meditate on that. Sometimes you can have a closed door orientation. So many doors are closed, you're just used to it being closed. Matter of fact, you, if the door is open, you close it because all you've seen for a long while is long closed doors. Change your mind. Go from looking at things from a human point of view to a spiritual point of view. Let's take a minute and meditate on this word. Lord God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that there's an open door for our church. And there's an open door for us as individuals. Lord, we confess that sometimes we just so used to the door being slammed shut. We can't even respond. We can't even imagine that there's opportunities. 
give us to know that your word says, even in the midst of persecution and difficulty, even in the midst of adversity and enemies, there's an open door in front of us. Help us to see the opportunities that this crisis of the pandemic brings. Help us to see the opportunity that the political crisis brings. Even as we continue, Lord, as a people, African-American people, to struggle against racism and white supremacy, help us not to just look at what they do or what's been done, but help us to look at the opportunity to do something today. And let us leave determined to make the most and walk through that open door. Yes. Now unto him who said, Behold, I set before you an open door. Be glory and majesty, dominion and power. Because he said also, I am the door. One that enters in, I me shall be saved and find good pasture. To our mighty and master, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Everybody said, Amen. Amen.